कैसे उसे भूल जाऊंदगी बब को चाहो रब को याद करो In this week's episode of City Reflections, we meet Omar Isa, an Ashid artist from London. We discuss with him the issue of music and instruments, and we highlight the importance of Nasheed in being an alternative to mainstream music. Brother Amr, jazakallah khair for joining us on City Reflections. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah for having me. So, Brother Amr, what, what made you um, what made you move directions from the music industry to uh, to Nasheed industry? Tell us your story, inshallah. Yeah, of course. Um, but first, let's start in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most just, the most kind, the most compassionate. the Lord of the Honorable Throne, the Lord of the Alameen, the King of Kings, the Master and Majesty of the Heavens, the Earth and the Universe. And I send my peace and blessings on the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, my brother, it was, a, it, was, it was kind of a weird kind of thing for me. I remember I was obviously an R&B pop singer, so I was doing that, I was in that industry for a, a couple of years, I had a manager. Everything was going well. In that industry, you need um, the DJs to play your stuff. And you have to start from underground because it's a full system in the mainstream music industry. So I was doing well. Uh, my tracks were on uh, commercial radio stations, uh, all the major radio stations. Um, uh, I don't think I should say Alhamdulillah, but they were on all the commercial radio stations. But what happened with me was that um, my mother and father are practicing. Uh, but me, myself, I never had no connection with Islam at all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. I mean, the earliest memories of my life were... my mother reciting uh, a Quran at Fajr time. And I specifically remember that. And uh, may Allah forgive me, I used to trouble my mother and father a lot when I was growing up. Um, you know, obviously sometimes you lose your identity when you're, when you're a Muslim and you're British, you don't know what is your identity. So I, I rebelled against that. And uh, I remember I troubled my mother so much. She said to me one day, she said, Omar, remember I can't see what you're doing. She just got fed up one day, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see what you're doing. And I was weird. I was a weird kind of person. I had a, I had a strong connection with my Lord, but I had no connection with Islam. So what happened when I was doing music and I used to go into places which are not befitting for anybody to go into, I didn't used to feel good. It never used to sit well with me. So I thought to myself, um, it kept happening. It just get worse. I felt literally felt depressed when I went, used to go into the studio. And uh, my um, producer was like, what's wrong with you, bro? Like, you're an artist. Why are you acting like this? I was like, I don't know, bro. Like, I've just got some burden on my shoulders, which, what am I doing? What am I doing? So I remember it was 2011, um, May, and it come to the point now I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. So I said, I'm stopping. I, I, I remember specifically, I said, I'm stopping. And then somebody said, why don't you do nasheed? And I thought, what's that? I, I didn't know what, what nasheed was. I was like, well, what is that? And he goes, well, you know, there's people who do like, you know, Islamic, You know, and they talk about Islam. And I went, yeah, but I don't want to use instruments. You know, I don't want to go into that world again. They went, no, no, that's the whole purpose of Nasheed. You don't use instruments. And I went, oh, really? And then they started giving me examples like, you know, boys to men and, you know, all these groups and they had to do the harmonies. I went, yeah, of course I know these groups. So yeah, do that. So I thought, okay, let me, let me see what can happen here. So I remember I walked into my producer's studio and I remember it and, uh, We were working on our new third track for the, for the DJs underground on the commercial stations. And he goes, all right, bro, your beat's ready. Everything's, let's go. And I was like, I'm not doing it anymore, bro. And he was like, what, what, you, what, you, what you mean you're not doing it anymore? So my producer's basically uh, Arab, but he's Christian. 
So, um, uh, and slowly now my beard has started growing. So certain things were changing about me. So I go, I'm not doing it anymore. And he goes, okay, so, okay, fine. You don't want to do this track. What do you want to do? I went, no, I don't want to do music anymore. And he went, so what do you want to do, bro? And I went, um, I want to do this track. I, I've, I've written this track. And he goes, all right, fine. Uh, what is it called? Uh, I looked at him and I said, Allah. And I remember he was on this, you know, one of these kind of chairs you have what swirls around and he just literally just turned around and went, what? What do you mean? And I went, you know, um, I just want to do this and, 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 and that's it. Thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, from there. And he's one of my biggest supporters now. And I still work with the producer and he was there, I wrote it and we just went from there, alhamdulillah. What's your op opinion on brothers uh, or nasheed artists who use instruments and they sometimes behave uh, in a way that does not reflect the, the Islamic identity. So they don't behave uh, properly in their video clips. What's your opinion on that? Um, so for example, what I will first say on the back is that all my brothers who do use instruments, I love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I respect them because they're artists at the end of the day. Um, but I feel that our industry, Nasheeds, is an industry which we should um, embrace in the way our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would 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 see it. Like at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was poets, you know, lots of them. The the famous one, Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu an, and um, he was the official poet of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he used his voice for the deen. And I always say to people who use instruments, I give them this example. Obviously, we don't know what would happen, but because we know what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said. I say, would you do what you do, act the way you do sometimes in your videos, if the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting there? And 100% they say no. And me, thanks to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, I can say, when I'm reciting Nasheed, if the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked in, I would, I would keep praising Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala with my voice only Nasheeds. And that's the thing that we should be proud of our industry of, of our genre if you look at mainstream music for example it's all broken up into um, sections like there's hip-hop there's R&B there's pop there's country music there's classical music now we should embrace nasheeds and embrace them as voice only there's no difference for example in somebody in nasheeds who uses instruments and somebody like Tracy Chapman for example Tracy Chapman never uses vulgar lyrics in her tracks she has a guitar, great singer, great vocals. There's no difference then. Okay, they say, yes, we're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I get that. But you're still using an instrument to, to kind of, uh, to like, it's like your vehicle. But nasheeds, our vehicle should be the voice. It should be something. And, and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, my brother, when I, when I left and I was chasing after that record deal, I remember when I recorded Allah, my first nasheed, I remember straight away I sent it to somebody and somebody signed me straight away. Literally, it was like, literally the month later, somebody said, we want to like sponsor your album. And I remember, subhanAllah, how kind is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I believe that we should like um, keep in the kind of direction of what nasheeds are. I think it's been a bit straight. But again, I will say I respect my brothers. Uh, but I believe that there should be no instruments in nasheeds. How can nasheed be a way of da'wah to Muslims and to non-Muslims? Uh, for example, for me, there was one profound moment in uh, my kind of journey in nasheed. Um, I remember I was invited on to um, uh, Big Questions. It's a show on uh, BBC um, and it's uh, hosted by a guy called Nicky Campbell. And I remember watching this show every Sunday morning. And I remember uh, before I got the call or anything, I remember they were very like kind of um, standoffish with Islam. They were like, you know, it's, it's hard religion, you know, what is the purpose of this? What, why is it so strict? And I remember I went there and uh, they were talking about my subject was uh, music and um, instruments. And that was the last subject of the show. And before that, they were talking about, subhanAllah, they were talking about some really, really random stuff. Like, and people were in the audience were agreeing with this kind of stuff, which... As a Muslim, no Muslim would agree with it. Even if you're liberal, conservative, whatever you are, you wouldn't agree with what they were agreeing with. But obviously that's a different world, right? So when I got to the music, I was like, Allah, what am I going to say about voice only nasheeds if they're agreeing to certain things which no Muslim would agree with? So what I did was that 
I was constantly just making the eye in my head. And I remember I, he came to me and he said, so, um, Omar Isa, you basically um, do um, nasheeds. What is that? And I went, it's faith-based music for me. And I believe that the voice is the most powerful tool we have. And I believe that um, you have enough music which um, glorifies drugs, um, fornication, alcohol, and all that kind of stuff. We need a, a, an area where we can praise our Lord. And this is what Nasheed is. And I remember, I, and I remember he said to me, can you recite a Nasheed? And I remember I sat down and I thought, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to recite? So all of a sudden, my first Nasheed, um, Allah, I had a section in it where um, I, I, there was, there's a dua in the hadith. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al -azim. And it's a, a dua that I kept with me. Even when I was not practicing, I remember my mother told me that my grandfather used to recite this dua. So I recited that. I was like, um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al Allah, Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Your mercy is great And I remember I did that And he just went quiet Everybody went quiet And he uh, looked at me and he went Oh that was, that was beautiful And I thought subhanAllah in my mind I thought wow I just used words that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Are the most pleasing to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and I remember my brother, after that, the producers, Nicky Campbell, they were constantly just saying that was amazing. And I specifically remember that because then he kept tweeting me. Oh, that was an amazing thought. And I thought, wow, only if you knew the words I said, you know. And I remember all the audience, when I finished, they applauded. Obviously, we don't chase after applaud. I don't want that anymore. But it was just a case of that. It left a very positive note. I remember specifically, everybody was coming up being very kind. And that is what Islam is, spreading the message of Islam. And I remember my album was given to a couple of Christian brothers as well. And they specifically said, we didn't know Islam was a religion of peace. And, and, and there's certain aspects that this is why we need to utilize what we have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, do you think Nasheed has fulfilled the, its function of being an alternative to main, uh, mainstream music? Uh, not yet, not yet, uh, not at all, because the thing is that we don't have enough of of us doing what we do, basically. For example, my brother, if you if you um, uh, go into the mainstream world and you have somebody playing the guitar and singing a very beautiful song, and then you have a nashida who uses instruments and does the same thing, there's no difference there. They'd go, oh, that's that's nice, and that was nice. But now, for example, if there was someone playing the guitar and then you had someone who doesn't use instruments and he came and he used his voice, the, 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 the tool we have is very powerful. We need more brothers who don't use instruments, you know, because what will happen is we will create our own industry and then they will come after us. One thing that we always see in the world is when you are proud of who you are, and you're proud of your identity, and you're proud of your religion, they will come to you. And they will think, wow, look how proud they are of that, that religion. Let's find out about this religion. That's what we need to do. We need to come together. Instead of all this, um, uh, sometimes there's a lot of disunity. Let's be honest. Even in the music thing, there is a camp. There's an instrument camp and there's a non-instrument camp. That is something we should try not to have. Because at the end of the day, what makes us Muslims. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, um, uh, that, that, test, that testifying that, you know, there's no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. If we just looked at that and we came together and we created a genre, a real genre of nasheeds, that is when the alternative will come for people. Because at the moment, our youth and our uh, elders see some like disunity. They're thinking, where's the unity with these guys? So why should we think it's something? But there's a lot of talented brothers out there. And if we all came and put our heads together, and we, I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that does happen, inshallah, that we come together and we give that alternative, then it can happen. Otherwise, at the moment, one person, it's only me and a couple of other brothers who don't use instruments. The majority is instrument users, if that makes sense. 
So um, at the moment, no, it's not happening. But inshallah, let's see what happens in the future. Um, well, Amal, what's your advice to any upcoming Nasheed artist? Uh, it's probably quite simple, really. Don't use instruments. You know, just be just be proud. Trust me, just uh, understand that the voice will help you. I am a living example, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my master and my majesty, that voice only can take you everywhere. You know, voice only can give you an identity where you're representing your beautiful religion of Islam. You know, um, so yeah, stay away from uh, the instruments and beatboxing and be confident in your voice. It's, it's a tool. It's an instrument itself. I, my slogan is my voice is my instrument and whatever music can do, so can the voice. What's your advice, Brother Amr, to uh, the Muslim youth who are still attached to the mainstream uh, music? Yeah, well, the, the, the truth is, my brother, the majority of Muslims listen to music. I mean, that is something we have to understand. And until we don't understand that, we won't be able to move forward. Um, so what I would say to my youth, my brothers and sisters, is that don't fall for that world. I've been there, I've seen it, I've tasted it, it was bitter, and I left it. You know, there is nothing in that industry, which, or, or, or in the words that they sometimes say in their, in their tracks, which is going to benefit you. For example, I had a youth say to me, just two weeks ago, he said to me, Yeah, but bro, come on man, some music's really good. You know, you're driving down the road and it's a good message. There's no profanities in it. And I went, but in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said there's some good in alcohol. But does that mean we drink it? No, it's forbidden for us. And he just stopped and he thought, he literally stopped. And all the brothers in the room were like, you know, they, they were like, the answer just really hit him hard. And that's the truth of the matter. Yeah, there may be good in it, in music. Of course there is. But what is, what is, it, is it more good to it or more bad? I believe there's more bad in the kind of music industry. Uh, so I would say to my youth, there's nothing in that industry. None of them artists, whoever they are, the mainstream artists are gonna help you in your life. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master is gonna help you. Don't look at them, these artists, these musicians, as your role models. Look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophets, the sahaba, the, you know, the, 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 the following generation, the greatest you know, Muslim subhanAllah. I even say to brothers and sisters, my nasheeds are a gap for you. So you listen to music, listen to my nasheeds, and eventually throw my nasheeds away as well, and eventually end up at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. That is the ultimate goal for all of us. There's no words better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. Yeah, it's difficult in the beginning, but if you focus and you dedicate yourself to it, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you so. My brothers and sisters, just stay away from that world. It's not going to benefit you in any way. I've been there as I said, and uh, yeah, just, just stay away from it. I, you don't need it. You know, listen to our nashees, inshallah. Uh, you know, Brother Amr, many scholars, they, they spoke about instruments and it's not, it's haram. And can you tell me from your experience, why do you think it's haram? What these instruments might lead you to? I will say to anybody who has ever, ever sinned in their life, when you were doing that sin, who was your accompanying partner? And the majority of the times, 99% of the times they say music. Music is something you, you, you use for anything. You even speak to people in the mainstream industry. They will say, you know, when I'm, when I'm smoking, you know, whatever I'm doing, I'm just listening to music, I'm just chilling. When I'm doing an act of, uh, which is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm listening to music. These are non-Muslims, by the way, I'm saying. Music is something that makes everything seem okay sometimes. You know, I've been in places where I've been nervous. Back in the day, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. And when a good track comes on, my confidence, my confidence gets up right there. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is, my, this is my time to, to shine. And that is the kind of thing. We have to understand that what effect it has on you. And the majority of the effect is that it, it, it's a very, it, it's, I was speaking to somebody about it and he said it's a very kind of, um, energy kind of field as well. It, music actually makes you feel a certain way, and I testify to that because I was that guy when I used to, when the right track comes on. There's anybody out there who will say to me when that right track comes on, you just get up and you're like, yeah, this is my jam, and that's the fact of the matter is that, um, as I said, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive me. I've been in really bad places, and I've seen music being played, and everything that your eyes turn to is haram. You're like, wow. You know, subhanAllah. 
and that is that is it. That's why there is a little bit of good in music, and I agree. But eventually, this is what music is today: nightclubs. Um, you go to a disco, you go wherever, accompanying you when you're doing a sin. If you're driving really fast, you're listening to all kinds of music can cater to your mind now, mindset now. This is the kind of thing that music can do. My music, Minder Sheets, for example, people say, you know, it, it soothes me, you know. And there's music that can make you angry. There's music that can make you aggressive. And that's why, that, that is what I believe. And also, the main factor is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in, um, in Sahih Hadith, and Bukhari, that there will come a time when my ummah will make um, things which are haram, halal. And he mentioned four things. He said the drinking of liquor, fornication, the wearing of silk, and the use of musical instruments. My brother, for me, there's no bigger scholar than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if he said it, then I have to listen to what our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and we should as well we always say we love our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we should take heed in his words because that is what's important when we follow his sunnah and this is his sunnah Finally Brother Amr can you inshallah perform one of your nasheeds to our viewers and Jazakumullah khair for joining us on City Reflections Yeah inshallah <coughs> um, so basically, um, this nasheed is, uh, I just wrote it um, last year. I released it. It's called Alhamdulillah, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everything I have, everything I own, everything I eat is thanks to you. Every breath I take, every bird I hear, every smile I see, it stands to you. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. All thanks is to Allah Alhamdulillah 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 All thanks is to Allah